My name is Bobby. And I was born in 1999 with absolutely no sight. And I had my first operation at three weeks old, my second at five weeks, and they've been nonstop ever since. Growing up, I never had a problem with operations or doctor's visits. In fact, I remember having to go in to see my eye doctor lots before school with my younger brother and my dad. And my dad would make us breakfast, and eating it in the back of his car, he'd say, don't spill any crumbs on my car. Okay, dad, don't worry about your precious car. I also remember asking my friends, so what surgeries have you had? <laughs> What's a surgery? You know when you go into hospital and you go into theater? Oh, like you go and see a show in the theater. How could they not know what surgery was when I got them every six weeks? Finally, when I was 10, I met another person with a visual impairment. And because neither of our eyes worked, I assumed that she had had surgeries too. So when I asked her and she said no, I was seriously confused. But you have bad eyes like me and you've never had surgery before. That's so unfair. Why did I need all these operations and doctor's visits? All my life, we've been trying to keep and maintain the sight that I have as best as we can. That's why I've had over 50 operations and around 150 minor surgeries. So at age 10, I had just discovered that my normal wasn't everyone else's normal and that I was different. But I didn't fully accept this until two years ago when I was walking into school on the day of my junior cert. And out of nowhere, I got knocked down by a cyclist. I was on the path, both my school shoes had flown off, my knee was grazed, but none of that mattered. What mattered was I had just been knocked down because I can't see. And I remember going home later that day to tell my mom, expecting sympathy, but was greeted with something completely different. Where was your cane? She said. In my room, hidden in my room, because there was no chance that I was going to walk around with a white stick. But it was time to get over that now. And ever since then, I've used my cane and haven't been knocked down once. When I was younger, the one thing I hated about operations was the needle. My life seemed like an endless journey back and forth to hospital, never being sure whether or not my sight would be better after surgery. And I was once asked, has there ever been a time when you wanted to give up? Give up all the operations and doctor's visits? Yeah, that'd be nice, but no. See, me giving up is just not an option. I don't have a lot of sight, so I'm really going to try and keep the sight that I do have. And as if by magic, as soon as I changed my attitude, the doctor started to use the gas to put me to sleep. And I love this gas so much that the doctors actually worry about me. So I got a day off school, I got seven up, I got Cocoa Pops, I got to be gassed. <laughs> yeah, I was fine, and I have been ever since. I once asked my eye doctor what percentage of sight I had, and he glanced at me and said, five. Five? That's impossible. I started questioning him. My dad started questioning me. Bobby, are you really going to start questioning a world-renowned ophthalmic surgeon? Yes, because he just told me I have 5% sight. I am the only blind or visually impaired person in Ireland to have a speedboat driving license. Yes, you heard me, I am the only blind or visually impaired person in Ireland to be fully qualified to drive a speedboat, although I can't see past my hand. <laughs> and I do everything I do in my life because I believe I have at least 25% sight, and you tell me now I have five. After my moment of panic, I stepped back and realized it's just a number and got on with my day. My determination in doing anything has gotten me to where I am today. And I'm not gonna change my perception of my capabilities because of someone else's perception of my capabilities. I actually forget that I'm visually impaired. And that might seem crazy to you, but to me, it's just another part of life. It never goes away, it's always there. I just see it as another part of me. Like, I'm funny, I have brown hair, and I hate eggs. Now, being able to accept yourself is one thing, 
but being able to accept other people's views and opinions on you is a whole other story. Only sighted people see me as visually impaired. I actually forget that I can't see, and I have fun with my disability. Your perception of your capabilities affects what you think you can do. Do not let other people define what you are capable of. I rang a new horse riding stables a few weeks ago to try and book a lesson, and when I had finished, my mum asked, did you tell them you were visually impaired? And I said, no. <laughs> she wanted me to ring back and tell them, but I didn't want to, because I love making people nervous by doing things they don't think I can do. The shock in their voice when they realize I'm visually impaired. I love showing them that my sight has not and will never determine the way I live my life. I have fun with my disability and actually forget that I can't see. And I may be visually impaired, but I've done some amazing things in my life that people twice my age haven't done. So my sight's an obvious impairment, but we all have something that tries to slow us down. And it's not what it is that matters, it's how you deal with it that matters. And in my life, I've learned that it's really helpful if you accept who you are and embrace it to get the most out of life. Keep a positive attitude when things get tough. And don't let other people define what you are capable of. So I want to finish with a story. Last summer, on my summer holidays with my family in Greece, there was a water slide in the place that we were staying in. And this particular water slide was pretty big. It was a vertical drop into a swimming pool. And it took my family two days to convince me to tell me that I would be OK to do this. And when I finally did it, it released a sound in me that I have never heard before. <laughs> the reason that I wanted to tell you that story is because in that moment, my family had to encourage me to do something that I wanted to do. And the reason that I wanted to speak at TEDx Tala tonight is because I want to remind you all that you are all capable of doing whatever it is that you want to do. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>